Yeah, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, good morning to Mr. Bharti, Mr. Anil Kumar, Dr. Ashok Kumar and uh, Metaji and all the delegates, participants and organizers. Uh, yeah, this is my first probably address at uh, Pipetech. Happy to be here, see a large number of executives from various uh, organizations in the paper value chain. I think uh, uh, from the, the, the speakers so on, I pick up that uh, how do we become world class? I think first important is to define what is world class because if you believe that world class is about scale, then I don't think we can set up a mill with 1 million tons per annum machine in India, right, say compared to China. So I think uh, because we normally talk about European mills and Chinese mills, their capacities, you talk to any vendors, they say, no, no, you're setting up a small machine, they are very large machines. But given that uh, across uh, sectors in India, uh, with our current economy and irrespective of the fact that we're going to grow big uh, that is what because we need to set up capacities that are going to be consumed today there are people in the industry including our industry uh, because they saw some exciting times one or two years they set up large number of mills and you know what is happening you set up capacity ahead of demand and everybody is going to sink and that has happened to a lo lo lot of industries so that we need to be careful about uh, second is I think to become world class it's not just about uh, technology or machine because each of these require a lot of capital investments you have to raise those capital investments and also deliver returns for a long period of time what according to me we have to do also is to one is to do after defining what is world class in our own uh, you know capacities etc also be ambitious to be world class in the sense let's become more competitive right because that's probably the more understandable definition and it requires that kind of ambition and uh, mindset uh, I think uh, you know Dr. Ashok Kumar talked about plantations raw material because nobody else is going to make raw material for us we have to create our own source of raw materials and that is also world class because if you see uh, the, the Canadian mills were struggling right now pulp mills or the European mills or or the South American mills, they have ensured that those who have ensured that they have security of supplies of raw material, they have stayed on for longer period of time. You can make good money in a year like this when the demand is high and raw material is available, but down the line, raw material will not be available and the history of what happened in 2013, 14, 15 again will repeat. Or the recovered fiber, China decides to stop importing and everybody is happy and we start importing more and more and start giving it to China and China China demand drops and all the duplex mills again are you know in difficult situation so playing opportunistic depending on what is happening in the commodity space or in the demand situation may help to do well in certain periods of time but I don't think that it can really make us world class right uh, and I think there are uh, industry including CII has been taking a lot of initiatives uh, you know to uh, drive best practices sharing and implementation uh, right so I think uh, one in the West, if I look at, I'm not a veteran, so I, I've spent a few years in this industry. But what I gather and understand uh, from the industry experts is that uh, over a period of time, our machine capacities, individual capacities, have been going up, which is good because then your fixed costs come down, your energy and water efficiencies go up, right? A lot of new capacities, technologies in the power plant uh, have come up, which also is helping us to to part of it offset some of the increasing fuel costs. I would, uh, if focusing on technology, I would uh, classify these technology in three parts. One is on core technology for pulp, paper and energy making, uh, which I think we spend as an industry a lot of time on this. Another is emerging digital technologies, which to what extent this industry has been adopting them and emerging energy technologies, right? So a lot of efficiencies of boilers, increasing efficiency of power plants, uh, turbines. There are a lot of uh, maturity in the renewable industry, for example, wind power, solar power, green hydrogen, bio waste, compressed gases, you have a lot of news every second day there is talk about all this. So how do we at least understand? They may not be really mature enough for us to adopt at this stage, right? Uh, I think there are a lot of also uh, technologies which have come and 
and which are evolving in terms of light weighting, lower ejections on machines, superior quality controls, if you have to become competitive and world class and lower specific energy, right? So some of these technologies have made some of the mills uh, very, very competitive in the, in the industry. Uh, I think uh, we need to uh, constantly evaluate uh, latest technologies, upgrade them and you know become more competitive. And I think decarbonization of or what we call as reducing fossil fuels in simple terms, uh, leadership and energy conservation are not just fads, I think. I think it's hitting very hard. A lot of industries, if you think, for example, steel. Today, if you have to export steel from 2026 onwards, Europe has introduced carbon tax, right? And that, we were happy that our paper is not uh, right now, but paper, because in the overall emissions, steel, of course, construction and steel industry score very high. But when they start skimming this, then one day, even paper, paper boards may come into the space, which means that we cannot then wake up because these, these uh, initiatives or goals to achieving these goals will take many many years to you know uh, achieve right so uh, given that india is also committed to net zero goals and i think there are a lot of work that is happening on incentives and regulations it's important that we start at least working on you know uh, dependence on coal furnace oil lpg a lot of it we use because we have taken these for granted that they're all available and they're coming at some competitive cost but the, if you see in the last two years uh, you know coal uh, prices have significantly shot up while all other things keep going up and down whether it is pulp whether it is you know agriculture residues etc but coal prices will never come down because these are all done by government monopolies why will they reduce the basic price they will never right so this price is only going to go up right uh, what we have done at itc some examples is that we have um, set up some windmills to wheel into our uh, factories we have also set up on-site power uh, solar plants and we are also uh, just commissioned recently a high efficiency recovery boiler uh, instead of soda recovery boilers which operate at much higher temperature and pressure they cost a lot uh, because these are all European technologies today but they are going to significantly reduce coal consumption so next year in our Badrachalam mill that some of you may be familiar with the coal consumption is going to come down by 15% and I think 15% is significant because any energy conservation projects will not give you a 15% kind of reduction in one year So these are some of the examples which will call for capital investment and the, the return on investments initially obviously will not be attractive. But if you project the coal prices for the next 10-15 years, these boilers will surely survive for at least 20 years if we maintain them well. Uh, they are going to give us uh, handsome returns. We also, uh, some of you who from the manufacturing and supply chain space would talk about a lot of digital technologies like artificial intelligence, IOTs and machine learning etc. Some years back they were all looking like some fancy terminologies but we at ITC have experimented and adopted some of these uh, you know path breaking kind of technologies which have helped us to significantly you know de-bottleneck our process plants for example pulp mills, energy chemical consumptions, reducing wastages right. But obviously uh, you know how do we start from where we start so we, we, we thought we must identify some good projects get some help of experts a lot of vendors will sell you the products we didn't want to buy any products we said we will understand these technologies try in-house set up our own team of uh, you know analytical engineers and set up some digital infrastructure they have given us uh, some good uh, progress good benefits so far and I think I urge people here to or CI also to uh, you know integrate some of these uh, networks and conferences to also paper and pulp industry right and I think we are we are uh, I think somebody mentioned we are doing well so these are the times to invest for future because when, tough, when there is difficult situation you don't have money to invest but whatever profits are coming if we can flow them back into some of these investments i think it'll really do good to us as an industry uh, from india thank you and wishing you all for the conference